Hello, hello there, good evening. Happy Wednesday as ever. We are here in the One Step Outside Facebook group with a live session, eight o'clock UK time. So my name is Anna Lundberg. I'm the founder of One Step Outside, where we help people around the world create a business and build a lifestyle that brings them more freedom, flexibility and fulfillment. And I don't know about you, but I've been sleeping really badly the last couple of nights. I'm usually a really good sleeper. So if I'm not looking my best, that's why. Um, despite this, magically, I've had the most productive days um, the last couple of days, which is great. So I've been running on some kind of bizarre magic energy that um, maybe the lack of sleep hasn't caught up with me yet, but hopefully tomorrow will be a quieter day. But today I've had so much fun. I have recorded the intro and lots of outros for my podcast, which the um, wonderful podcast editing team are now putting together with my music. I chose the music a year ago, so I'm not sure what I think about it now, but I am going to go with it simply to get this out there now, finally, for my final business goal of 2018. And in the meantime, I need to just finalise the first couple of episodes and hope that Apple and all the little technical gnomes out there um, are going to uh, take care of the, um, the publishing on time as well for me. So fingers crossed for that. Now, what else is going on? Oh, today I've also recorded a webinar. Um, which is the annual Reimagining Success webinar. This is all around reviewing this past year, so 2018, because yes, it is almost over, I'm sorry to say. There's a little bit of time still to um, hit the ground running, or rather sort of drive through to the finishing line to finish some of those goals for 2018. But essentially, you know, we're almost into Christmas now. There won't be a lot of time now to finish, I'm afraid. So um, now is a great time to review 2018 and plan for 2019. Do say hi if you're popping on live. I'm just chatting about the webinar that's coming up soon. I've just recorded that. It is pre-recorded um, just to make it really easy for you. So you'll be able to choose between lots of dates and times in the coming weeks over November, December. So to make sure that you have no excuse not to take part. Um, but of course it will still be very interactive. It's actually very short as well, it's 30 minutes. So rather than me just sitting there being quiet as you work through it, and you can pause it, you can come back to it later on and so on. But I find this a really useful exercise, hopefully you do too. And new for this year, there will be a business success webinar as well. So taking a different approach. And for those of you who already have a business, looking at what success looks like for you in 2019 when it comes to the business, in terms of your big picture goals, the seasonality of the different quarters in the year, and how you're gonna break those down. So podcast, two webinars, and there's also the fun advent calendar coming up in December. So every day there'll be a little bit of a message and a challenge here in the group and over on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's Anna S. E. Lundberg. So the handle is Anna S. E. Lundberg and I love to see you over there. But tonight is going to be a little short uh, session, but I did want to cover as ever the topic for this week, which is how you can keep ahead of your competition. And I think this is such an important topic and I'm sure um, those of you watching either live or watching the replay will let me know if this resonates with you. But I think when we're starting out, it's easy to think, oh my goodness, how on earth can I come up with an idea that nobody else has ever come up with before? How am I going to be fresh in this really crowded market? Um, I was just listening to a podcast with Seth Godin, in fact, this marketing guru who was talking about positioning versus um, all the competitors out there today. And it is an important one to consider. However, it's not something that we should allow to stop ourselves from even launching the business in the first place. And certainly if we already have a business up and running and um, we don't want to get too distracted by everything else that's going on, we want to really focus on what we're doing. Of course, learning from competition, looking outwardly, externally as well but coming back and really focusing on what we do well. Hi Angela, great to see you. I've been really enjoying, by the way, everybody's um, chat about the books. Looks like we have lots of existing authors, would-be authors, um, work-in-progress authors, which is great. So hopefully we can continue that conversation and uh, learn from each other and maybe there might be some new resources around that in the new year as well. But on this topic of competition, as ever, I'll work through the different points. Throw your questions at me. If you're watching live or the replay, just let me know if any of this resonates or if you have any questions and we'll see where it takes us. But the first point, as perhaps is often the case, is around mindset. And I think the biggest thing around competition is that it's not a bad thing. And it seems odd. There's this idea as well, I don't know if anyone's read the book of the... Um, 
I want to say the blue ocean strategy. I haven't actually read it, but I understand the concept. So you've got the red ocean, which is where all the sharks are there. And it's red because of the blood of the sharks that are attacking each other and attacking the fish or whatever they do. Um, apologies for my poor biological, biological knowledge. Um, and then there's the blue ocean, which is where there aren't any sharks and you can just sort of surf around, I guess, and live in paradise. Now, I think the reality is it's very difficult to find those blue oceans in the sense of really a pure market where there are no other players. And in fact, I'd say that's unlikely to be a good market if there are no other players there let's say i don't know there are no other coaches helping people leave their jobs set up their business and so on probably there's a good reason for that um the market isn't ready for it people have never heard of coaches they're not ready to pay for that kind of thing and so on so the fact there are a lot of coaches out there is actually a good thing in the sense that there are people who are earning money doing this and there are people who are willing to pay for this and it is a bigger trend in society that people are turning to coaches that we're looking to set up our businesses and grow and so on. So again, the fact that there is competition in your particular area isn't a bad thing. On the other hand, we don't want to be comparing ourselves, and I think this is something that does resonate with a lot of us, and certainly with me, um, to people who are much further ahead of us. So by all means, we can let ourselves be inspired by people who are, you know, a few years ahead, and that's why it's often good to work with a coach who's a bit of a role model, who's a few steps ahead and done the things that you want to do. Certainly my coach is quite a bit further along than I am now. She started quite a few years before me, so it's quite a stretch, but it really does help to elevate my performance and really give me that sort of bigger goal to aim towards. But let us be inspired by that, but not put off. Because bear in mind that if you're just starting now, if you're two, three years into your business, you can't possibly compare yourself to someone who's, you know, 10 years, 20 years, um, or even, you know, five, six years into the business. The reality is that the market looks so differently, like 10 years ago, and um, people could just write lots of blogs and get loads of traffic. The first people on podcasts, um, you know, were superheroes and, and built massive businesses and that. People had marketing funnels and Facebook ads and so on and were making money pretty easily. That's not the case anymore because there is a lot more competition. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. It just means we shouldn't be comparing our early days with someone else's mature business. And of course, that's what we're going to see as well. Bear in mind, um, you know, that we only see the shiny kind of perfectly presented business that people are putting forwards. Um, I do think the good news is that, you know, a lot more of us are doing these lives and sharing a bit more behind the scenes of their business. So hopefully you can get more of an authentic look of what's going on and it's a bit more imperfect. Um, but really, again, do not compare yourself to people who are way, way ahead of you. Um, be inspired a little bit, a few steps ahead, but then get on with what you're doing. So that's the first thing on mindset. A little bit of competition is good and don't compare yourself to people who are way ahead. So let me know if that makes sense and if it resonates with you, if you ever feel like, oh, people are so far ahead and I just don't know um, how I'm ever going to manage to stand out and make money in this market, especially because I'm just starting out and I'm not good enough and so on. And then, of course, we get to the famous imposter syndrome. Now, the next couple of things are actually about recognising your competitors. So we always at um, P&G, where I used to work, Procter & Gamble, we used to look at assessing the landscape, as we called it. Um, an important part of understanding your business and your market is to understand who those players are. Um, they may not be exactly the same as you, um, but certainly they will be um, working with similar people. They might be solving a similar problem. Um, they could be all around the world now with a global market, of course. They could be in any country around the world. Really understanding who those players are and understanding, you know, are they sort of the leaders in their industry or are they more sort of these smaller, more in your kind of level but getting a really good understanding of who those key players are and um, this is if you're you know further along your business you'll know that that kind of thing is quite useful when you're targeting facebook ads and so on um, but really at a basic level it's great to understand um, that you know the type of work i do there are these leading figures um, there are these other kind of mid-range people and so on. Understand a bit about their pricing. How do they position themselves? Are they sort of really high end going for the, I don't know, six and seven figure entrepreneurs? Are they um, cheap and cheerful? Are they mass market? Um, are they one to one or one to many? All these different aspects. But getting a really good grasp of who the people out there um, are that's incredibly important. Again, we were talking about the books before. So thinking about, you know, if there is a particular book you'd like to write, probably 
other books have been written on that topic and that's okay we're not going to write the only book and that's ever been written if it is probably again people aren't that interested in reading that topic but the important thing is that you're going to write this you're going to bring something unique to it nonetheless it is important to understand what the other books are on the topic so that you know how you can position yourself a little bit differently both play by the rules on the one hand ironically and then also learn how to break those rules so know your competition the other audience you need to know is your client or your customer. So that's really the strongest way that you can ever position yourself against those horrible competitors over there um, and to really solve a problem for your customers, to always be one step ahead. Because if you, if you are asking questions, if you're constantly trying to understand what your target audience is working on, what they're struggling with, their wants, needs, desires, fears, and so on. And again, not necessarily just in the narrow area that you work on, but really broadly. And um, within branding and marketing, we have such a thing called a value proposition canvas. And we actually look at all their wants, needs, and fears. Um, and we make sure that we consider that beyond just, let's say, um, again, in my area, let's say I could focus very narrowly on they want to change career and they want to build a business or whatever it is. But actually, if I have a target audience in mind, there might be other things, you know, they're trying to get their kids off to work or they're trying to plan their travels around whatever it is and their finances and so on. So getting more of a holistic picture of that um, individual, of that group really helps to understand what do they really care about? Um, again, I'm a little bit into the book topic at the moment, but I was just listening to a podcast where they were talking about nobody wants your book. Um, you know, if I say, here, have a copy of my book, nobody cares. On the other hand, if I go here, I'd love to give you this um, inspiration, reassurance on your journey as you leave the corporate nine to five and start your own business. Or um, I'd love to um, bring you into this world of vampires and demons in medieval Venice or whatever it is. That's a lot more exciting. So really thinking about what does this person care about? What does this group care about? Not just what is the one little narrow thing that I have. So understanding your competitors on the one hand and understanding your clients. Now, another piece, of course, differentiating against your competitors is going to be in your, around your personal brand. And it's something I've written about and talked about a lot in the last few years. And it is something that some people feel a bit uncomfortable with. And I certainly never thought about it. And it feels a bit like bleh, that you have to be a personal brand as an individual. But the reality is whether you're an author, a freelancer, a business owner, a consultant, coach, or even, to be honest, an employee, um, you have a personal brand, whether you think you have or whether you manage it actively or not. Just like any business has a brand, um, any company, even if they don't manage actively. So this is what people think of you. Um, they talk about you when you're not in the room. The, the words they'd use to describe you. Um, you know, Angela, she's always blah, blah, blah. Or um, Bob, never, duh, 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 whatever it is, like positive, negative, whatever it might be. That is your personal brand. And so it's really important to actually open our eyes to what that is um, and to manage it actively. Now, that this doesn't mean lying. It doesn't mean doing something sleazy. It just means thinking about how we come across and what we can bring for our own unique stories, um, backgrounds, expertise. You know, we did the um, Ikigai challenge a few weeks ago, and that's a great way to really pull together our unique strengths and skills and passions and beliefs and so on into this really exciting concoction that makes you completely different to all the other coaches slash writers slash photographers or whatever it is out there, which is really exciting. And um, my coach actually talks about how she was an NFL cheerleader back in the day. And you know, a lot of people really like that because it sort of shows that she was an athlete and there was that discipline and so on. But really it's just a fun part for me, at least of the story that she's done this, she's done the massive corporate world, she's now a coach, she's a mother and so on. And these are all really important parts of the story and you never know which part of the story will resonate with people that people will come to you and they'll say oh my goodness the fact that you said that you had blah 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 um really you know felt like you understood me and I've done that too I felt that too whatever it is so your personal brand to some extent really is just your unique story your journey career wise as much as you want to share of your personal sort of again desires and fears and so on beliefs as you want to of course that's a personal decision um, but managing your personal brand is going to be critical to keeping ahead of your competitors. Because if you're just a commodity, if it's just career coach versus career coach versus career coach, or photographer versus photographer versus photographer, people are just going to buy based on price. 
Um, they're going to buy whatever they happen to find first or whatever's local, whatever's most convenient, um, whatever someone recommends first of all, boom, done. On the other hand, if you really connect with people, if you resonate with them, if you engage with them, if you share your story, if you bring them along in the journey and you interact and you, you support them and all these things, um, it becomes a lot more powerful and they're much more bought into who you are and why you're a photographer, why you've written this book, um, why you're in this particular business and that mission is incredibly important. Now the last few things on um, staying ahead of a competition are more in terms of how you're going to do this and one is being persistent and I have talked about this a lot too so apologies for my persistency on this topic but I really do believe the number one reason businesses and entrepreneurs fail is that they give up too soon and it's the non-sexy part of showing up every day to a live when there's only a few people potentially or writing that blog post even when you're tired and um, putting out your podcast every week editing your book um, whatever it might be, you know, fixing coding issues on your website, um, contacting people, doing proposals when you're getting lots of no's and rejection, turning up on other people's podcasts and so on, even though you're not seeing a lot of results, etc, etc. Doing that every day, every week, every month, every year, ultimately we see results. Now they don't come as quickly as we think or we expect or we hope and that's why so many people give up earlier. And I think that's a big shame because um, we have, a lot of these people have wonderful things to share with the world and they have a really strong business proposition and so on, but they're just not willing to put in that effort. So simply showing up um, is going to really get you a long way. And I'm just going to see here the comment because I can't quite see the full comment. So here we go. So Angela's saying, I think one of the most important things about personal brand is to be fiercely consistent. Now that's great. So that fits quite nicely with what we're talking about now as well in how we behave, respond, live, work, etc. To do that, we have no choice but to be authentic and true to ourselves, otherwise it will drive us nuts. I think that consistency itself can set us apart from a competition. Yeah, absolutely agree. And there's so many interesting parts to that, Angela. Consistency, absolutely, because it's about building trust, isn't it? Um, in particular, when you are your business, you are your brand, you need to show up on time. You need to, they need to know, the customer needs to know you're not gonna screw them over on price. Um, you know, you need to have integrity, you need to maybe um, have an NDA, so stay confidential, it's sensitive information. Um, and you need to be, you know, a, a consistent whole person who shows up that you feel comfortable with, confident in letting them, you know, paying your money, first of all, um, and working with. So consistency there is really important. And the other piece, and you know, it's one of those cliched words, but so, so important, is authenticity. And again, that is why the personal brand is so powerful and what's so exciting now is that you can just be yourself and again you get to sh choose how much of yourself you show up with you certainly don't need to tell everybody every aspect of your life and let's say you're a freelance graphic designer for a luxury high-end brand you might not want to share your heavy metal um preferences or like i can't even think of a good contrast there but you're i don't know maybe you're um uh, massive tattoos and things for a particular context but in another context that could absolutely be what makes you stand out it makes you edgy it makes you a really exciting luxury graphic designer because you have that sort of edge that little dangerous side so you have to decide what you want to bring to the table what makes sense for your business and for your clients but absolutely it's not about lying it's not about shaping you know some kind of Face. It's impossible now in today's world of social media and everything um, to present a fake face to the world. So being yourself is far less exhausting than trying to put on this perfect veneer. And again, you know, my makeup is, you know, pretty much non-existent and hair is barely brushed and so on. But here I am showing up consistently. So hopefully that's more important than necessarily that shiny veneer. Um, but great point, Angela, both the consistency there um, in how we behave. So it's not just the marketing stuff. It really is every day every interaction we have with people on social media, every email, every call and so on, even if it's some trivial detail. And then on the other hand, the, um, the authenticity is so important. So thanks so much for sharing, that's a really great point. And the last couple of points I'll then wrap up are a little bit uh, related to each other and it's um, again, very personal. So the first one is to be constantly evolving. And you can do that by staying in touch with, yes, what your competitors are doing, importantly, what your clients are needing and wanting, because you may have done this analysis at some point, oh yes, my clients want this, that and the other, but the reality is that will evolve. People change, 
the world changes, not to mention, you know, you might start attracting a different kind of customer or they might also evolve with you. So maybe you started out by helping people who wanted to leave their corporate jobs and actually as people have followed along with you, now they have left their jobs, they've started their businesses and now they want to up level in their business and then there's a new opportunity there to take them, you know, from you've taken them A to B, now you can take them B to C or C to D, etc. So evolving in the sense of understanding where your customers are today and seeing the opportunities there. Again, and I'll mention the podcast is the Creative Pen podcast. It's Joanna Penn, who is a successful um, author who's written loads of books, non-fiction and fiction. She does these really long podcast episodes, but I really like them. And what I find fascinating about her is apart from the fact that she talks about all her um, marketing and her business models and so on for writing and publishing and she interviews people and so on, and she has so many interesting aspects to it, she's really interested in AI and blockchain and all these sort of cutting edge technologies and really looking at, she was just again in a podcast I was listening to today, she was talking about, you know, oh, I can't, it doesn't make sense for me to travel to this event, to speak, you know, the time to get there, the travel, the expense and so on just doesn't make sense. In the future, not too distant future, maybe I can have an avatar um, that I either record in the in advance or even I present myself live, a bit like this, but some kind of three-dimensional CGI avatar, who knows? Um, and I love the way she thinks in, in terms of that future possibility. And maybe some of it's a bit sort of um, sci-fi, it's a bit futuristic, but I think it's people like that who are gonna always be ahead of the competition because they're always thinking, okay, paperback is dying a little bit, but eBooks, audiobooks, podcast and then okay that's kind of live video what's going to be the next thing and always trying to be an early adopter of these new things we never know exactly you know one thing is um igtv for example of instagram nobody really knows it doesn't seem like something that instagram is focusing on right now but we do know that video is massive at the moment live video and so on and it's something that you know we can experiment with and then keep an eye out for um, and then when perhaps it becomes a bigger priority for Instagram let's say then at least we have that base that we can build on um, but you know really thinking of are there exciting ways that you can um, draw upon these new different uh, technologies and things um, artificial intelligence you know is being used in chatbots for example in um, you know automatic chat on Facebook um, it's even being used in, in mental health and therapy for example for people to talk to so there are so many interesting applications so never stop evolving in your business. Don't just deliver a product or a service and go, ta-da, I have this group program and that's it. I'm gonna now sit back while the money comes in because that won't happen. You'll have to, first of all, keep promoting that and so on, but also you wanna add other products and services as well. And then the final one, you may know, if you know me by now, that one of my big values is learning, lifelong learning and growth. And so never stop learning. So not just in the business and packages and so on, but you as an individual, um, as coaches, it's really important for us to sort of be role models and walk the talk, as it were. So I'm constantly working on my own beliefs and fears and visions and all these things. Um, it's incredibly important for me to always work with that. Of course, I have a coach. Um, I've been working with a meditation coach now for a month, which I can talk more about another time. Um, you know, but there are lots of opportunities there to work with people, to learn. Um, a couple of clients I was speaking to early on have signed up to a few new courses already in the new year. Someone's looking at doing a degree next autumn. Um, someone else is doing, you know, a free shorter program online. There are so many opportunities now, listening to podcasts, watching lives like this, or more formal programs, reading books if we're gonna be old fashioned, turning up to physical events. There are so many ways to keep learning. And again, that's really gonna keep you on the cutting edge and ahead of these lazy people around us who can't be bothered to keep learning. You think, you know, oh, I've qualified as a coach now, so I'm just gonna sit back and again and, and be a professional coach. No, because we can all always get better. The craft evolves, we need to hone our craft um, with experience, of course, with on-the-job learning, um, but then also with you know formalized learning as well. So that's really important. So I think I've talked a lot there and not a lot of interaction today, so apologies for just throwing all that at you. Um, if you do have time to reflect on it, if you have any more comments um, that you want to share, then do let me know. Any questions on any of these points as well? It's a big topic and I think each of these could even be broken down into other bits um, that we can dig deeper into. So if any of that really resonates, whether you're interested in the personal brand and as Angela was saying about this authenticity and consistency and showing up, that can be something we can talk more about another time um, and any other aspect, just let me know. Apart from that, over the next few weeks, we will be taking a little bit of a break from this kind of how-to business um, kind of practical approach, as I said, to look more at 
envisioning our new year for 2019 and um, reviewing 2018, looking at life next year, looking at our bucket list for next year and um, looking at our business goals and so on for the new year as well. And then hopefully we'll all have a little bit of a break over Christmas and new year as well. So we can have some family time, some uh, time for reflection, for eating lots of good stuff and, uh, and just having a bit of a break because that's very important. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that topic. Um, if you didn't watch live, then again, of course, as ever, you can comment and ask questions on the replay. But thanks so much for joining Angela. I can't see who the others are on the uh, live, so do say hi if, um, if you want me to um, recognise you as well. But I really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday as well. Bye for now.